In this video, I will demonstrate how Gumball is used and can interact with other modeling features to make modeling faster and more accurate at the same time. So first of all, the Gumball is the icon that you see when you click on an item and it will appear if Gumball has been enabled. Uh, the Gumball can be used for various things. It can be used for moving can be used for scaling and for rotating. Um, the way to use the Gumball as accurate modeling tool um, can be used by clicking on one of the arrows, for example, to move objects or to copy objects. Clicking on one of the uh, arrows will enable this pop-up and I can enter my distance in this way and if I click on it while holding the option or alt key on Windows then I make a copy of the object again option clicking or alt clicking on Windows will make a copy. Similarly, you can use the gumball to rotate objects. So if you click on that and enter the angle, you can precisely rotate objects. Let's say 45 to give a better example here. Um, now suppose that I want to move this object uh, from this point here to that point. There are various ways to do that. You can also directly do that in the interface by clicking near to the object at the end until end appears and then snapping it to one of the objects. But if you want to do that with Gumball for example, if you want uh, the center of this object to be at this point, it will be more difficult by moving and more easy by using the gumball. For this, snappy dragging should be active. If smooth dragging is an, uh, active, then it will just move from the cursor and you cannot really snap to geometry. So snappy dragging should be on. And then you can see is if I start moving, it snaps to my mouse cursor and then I can move it to that point. Notice that um, I'm using this handle here to move it in the XY plane. Scaling of objects can also be done by using the gumball and that you do with these handles uh, These square handles So you have one blue for the Z direction A green one for the Y direction and a red one for the X direction So by dragging you can Freely scale but you can also uh, start dragging and then enter a value. For example, if I enter 20 now as value, then uh, it will be scaled from the center of the gumball to that end will be 20. So in this case, this object will become 40 units wide. As a value, you can also enter math. So for example, if I want this to be 80 units wide in total and I don't want to calculate what the half of that is I can just enter in 80 divided by 2 and there you have it uh, scaling in all directions is done by scaling one handle and holding shift you can see you can also snap to existing geometry while doing so Um, often you also want to be able to scale in 
two directions only and this can only be done free style with this handle using the gumball and so if I want to scale this let's say up to this box in two dimensions and I want to do that with this handle I hold shift and start dragging that handle uh, so this in this case I cannot snap to any geometry so in that case it's probably easier to scale in uh, three directions first and then use the other handle to scale back the Z direction but uh, what now if you want to scale this object from this point and scale this point down using the gumball that means you first have to relocate it like so and then I have to move this handle to that point and to move that handle you have to uh, before clicking on this and moving it I have to hold the command button or control button in Windows then start dragging and release that button and snap to that end see now it's relocated to that end and I can start entering a dimension so for example 75 and so again if you want to do that and scale in this direction I'm holding my command button or controlling windows I keep I start dragging and release that command or control button and snap to one of the ends in order to scale it in that direction Once you click outside of the object and select it again, uh, you see now it is still uh, in the same orientation. But if it, if you want to relocate it to its original position, you can always do so by clicking here and reset the gumball. Now let's take a look at a more advanced case. In this case, I want to move these corner points of this object. Move it in this direction and line it up with this line here. So for that, I'm going to make one helping line from here. And let's also make one from here in this direction. So hovering over this end, pressing tab and snap it to the intersection like that and then turning on the control points with solid PTM and let's say I want to move these with the gumball to that location um, I can do so in this view by moving it to that end So that's one way. If I don't want to use um, that helping line, I can do that also using Gumball by realigning my Gumball to this face. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one way to do that is to uh, use relocate Gumball and doing the full operation by aligning all and then starting to drag these until I find this intersection another way to do that is by making sure that you're align, you align your C plane to that object so aligning the C plane to that object selecting these points and you will see that now my gumball is aligned with that construction plane now if I select the same point in this view it will be aligned with my top C plane and so 
doing it in this view is important. And now I want to snap it to that intersection point that I just used. I cannot do that in this view, as you can see, but I can in top view by using apparent intersection. Finally, a few words about the gumball settings in themselves. So if you click on this little icon here, that circle, you get this menu. And there are several alignment options. So you can align it to object, world, and view. Um, and you can also change the settings of the gumbel in general. So let's take a short look at those. Um, one thing that might be helpful is to increase the menu size of the ball a bit and maybe also reposition it a bit. For me it's um, more clear if it's slightly larger and farther away from the gumball.